right, let's get started. I've had a really good couple of weeks here. I passed my qualifying exam, I went to a music festival, my mom came and visited me, but I'm really excited to finally create and share some more of my notes. So without further ado, let's get to the topic of today's notes, which is caffeine. More specifically, how to keep that energy high and the health benefits of caffeine while avoiding building a tolerance and increasing stress levels and any kind of other negative side effects. Man, I'm really glad that I'm wearing black so you guys don't have to see me sweat with all this coffee. Not many of us are used to thinking of caffeine as a drug, but that's literally what it is. It is the most unregulated stimulant. In the US, over half of everyone uses it every single day at a rate of approximately three cups per day. The average cup of coffee has between 150 to 250 milligrams of caffeine. In addition to coffee, you can also drink your caffeine in forms like energy drinks or those little shots of energy that they have at gas stations but caffeine also comes in alternative forms you can get it as pill form these pills have 100 milligrams of caffeine in them you can also get it in this little gummy form with very very small amounts of caffeine in there which are personally my favorite and these gummies have just 10 milligrams of caffeine i'm a plant scientist so i get really excited about plants like almost too excited but whatever so i'm gonna be talking about the energy plant the coffee bean so let's get one thing first out of the way Coffee beans are not beans, they are seeds. So just like how cherries have a pit in the center of that fruit, the coffee fruit has a pit in the center and that center pit is actually the coffee seed, which is also known as the coffee bean. The reason it's called a coffee bean is just because it looks like a bean. In its normal form, coffee honestly tastes disgusting. It's really, really bitter. To avoid this bitterness problem, a lot of companies will just use synthetic caffeine instead of the caffeine that is derived from green coffee bean. But as I will talk a little bit more about later, caffeine is just one of over a thousand compounds in green coffee beans. So there's a lot more going on. And if you're just having synthetic caffeine, you might not get the same feeling as when you're drinking coffee. So when you're awake and you go about your life, you kind of get drowsy the longer you're awake, and this is because of a particular chemical in your body. I'm just gonna call this the drowsy chemical. So this drowsy chemical in your brain goes and sits inside every receptor. And then this causes feelings of drowsiness or sleepiness and relaxation and that kind of thing. But when you've got caffeine in the system, it actually goes and touches that exact same receptor and binds to it, which means that the drowsy chemical cannot bind. And so this helps promote all sorts of stimulation and energy for your entire body. But this drowsy chemical is not just in your brain, it's also in your lungs and your heart and your kidneys and even in your fat. So in all these different areas, caffeine is affecting all those places as well. So for example, in your heart, caffeine can increase your beats per minute. It can help you with fat burning. In your kidneys, that drowsy chemical is really essential for helping to regulate waste. So when you're drinking lots of coffee, you might need to make a trip to the bathroom. I found loads of studies about the health benefits of coffee and all the compounds in it. Caffeine is great. Caffeine helps a lot with burning fat. If you have it before exercise, it can really help. It also helps with cognitive function, reducing the risk of liver cancer and mouth cancer and throat cancer and the risk of Alzheimer's. If you're interested in that or any of the other benefits, check out the description below. Unfortunately, caffeine also affects your stress level. Not that I would know anything about that. One study that I found actually put it really, really well. Caffeine users who are under stress or people who use caffeine more during stressful periods to work more effectively may experience more of the effects that stress produces. So caffeine and stress together create a greater stress response in the body than either of these factors does by itself. One more thing that's important to note, as a lot of heavy coffee users will know already, is that you can build a tolerance to caffeine. Because caffeine goes and sits in those receptors in your brain in order to help you get more excited and more energy, in response to having lots and lots of caffeine around all the time, your brain will actually start building more and more of those receptors. So you'll have to have more caffeine in your system in order to get that same level of energy high. Science shows that if you cut out your coffee or caffeine intake for a month, that'll significantly reduce your tolerance. So we want to maximize the energy and the health benefits that we're getting from coffee 
but also avoid having increased stress, increased risk of panic attacks, or building a tolerance. Earlier I mentioned that some places use synthetic caffeine instead of the stuff that you derive from actual coffee beans, but these two aren't quite the same, because caffeine is just one in over a thousand compounds that give coffee that taste, smell, and the feeling that you get. So synthetic caffeine doesn't exactly produce the exact same feeling as stuff that you get from actual coffee beans. All these other compounds help with things like neural simulation and fat burning as well. Your body generally absorbs the compounds in coffee pretty fast, but it takes a while to process all of them. For example, the half-life of caffeine is six hours. So if you get a cup of coffee midday around two o'clock, half the caffeine in that cup of coffee will still be in your body six hours later or at 8 p.m. Cafes often have calorie counts for all the food that they have on their menus, but you don't often see the milligrams of caffeine per drink. So I created this little chart for you guys to check out and you can see everything from espresso to soft drinks to just coffee. Sometimes you don't really need an entire cup of coffee. Maybe you already had coffee for the day. Maybe you want just a small boost of energy. Maybe you're planning on sleeping soon. So that's where these can be really useful. Not only do they have a long shelf life and they're way more portable, but you can also monitor your dosage and usage of these as well. For healthy adults, the maximum amount of caffeine per day that's considered safe is around 400 milligrams. For people who are pregnant or breastfeeding, that maximum is 200 milligrams. For people who have any kind of cardiovascular issue or disease, I generally found that it was really recommended to limit the intake of caffeine, but please talk to your doctor about any kind of issue like that. When I need an extra energy boost, I generally first think to myself, how much of an energy boost do I need? If I need like a serious energy boost, then I will have a cup of coffee, but usually I find myself just wanting like a tiny bit of energy to help me focus a little bit, finish a particular project. That's where these gummies come really in handy. I am not getting paid to say these about them, but if you followed me on my Instagram, you'll know that I've been using these gummies for a couple months and punched energy gummies have only 10 milligrams of caffeine in them, which is excellent if you wanna have an energy high throughout the entire day. Also great that they are actually derived from green coffee beans. So they have all the other compounds that coffee has in them as well. And it's not just synthetic caffeine. So as I mentioned earlier, green coffee beans are really bitter, but these are actually not bitter at all. They found a magical way to somehow make it taste really good and still keep the calorie count at only seven calories per gummy. So basically, caffeine is a drug that can help you with fat burning, getting focused, getting energy, but you might want to track how much you're using if you want to avoid building a tolerance or if you want to try and limit your caffeine intake per day. If you recently caffeinated or you want to sleep soon or you just want like a small boost of energy, it might be helpful to consider some alternate forms of caffeine like tea, pills, or even these gummies right here. Punched gummies are personally my favorite, especially because they are currently the smallest amount of caffeine on the market right now. So whether you're having coffee or tea or pills or gummies or whatever the heck else, I hope you think of this video the next time that you're getting caffeinated. Mm -hmm.